Hello, my name is Auburn and I am fascinated by runes. Uh, and so this is the first of a short series of films about runes and rune magic, historical rune magic. Now I'm going to do this in an old school way without a teleprompt, which means I have to refer to my notes. Um, so I'm going to look at all the information about how runes were used historically from when they first started right up until the end of the Middle Ages. And I'm also going to look at what happened to the runes after the Middle Ages and how they came into the modern day. So, before I go any further, let me tell you a little bit about myself because you have to decide if I'm worth listening to. Okay, so as I said, my name is Auburn. I have a degree in Anglo-Saxon, Old Norse and Medieval Languages and Literature. Um, and nowadays, I work with Viking art. Uh, to be more precise, I, I study historical finds of Viking art and I use them as inspiration for making jewellery. Uh, I make bronze and silver jewellery at Northern Viking Silver. Um, and behind the camera is my lovely partner Rachel. It's her job to work with technology and to stop me from being boring. Well, she's done, she's done a pretty good job so far because this is not the first film we've shot. <laughs> Okay, so apart from nerding about Viking art, I have a, a, a fascination for ancient Germanic culture. And in these films, as part of this cultural interest, I want to talk to you about runes and their historical connection to rune magic. Now, I've always been fascinated by runes, and I guess like many of you, I first came across them in the works of Tolkien. I think uh, Tolkien is an amazing distiller of the, the feeling of ancient Germanic culture, which he kind of brings to us in the modern day. And then, possibly also like many other people, I came across one of those books on mystical runes. Now, it was way back in my youth, in the 1980s, a group of friends bought me a, a small book, beautifully cloth-bound book, called The Book of Runes by Ralph Blum. Um, and this book promised to show me the tradition of runic divination as it had been passed down through the generations from our long lost ancestors. Wow, and the author also implied that this was part of an unbroken tradition. Well, I was stoked, you know, this was really exciting. So I read the book really avidly and I read it carefully. And you know, the more carefully I read it, the more I realised that Ralph Blum had actually made most of it up. Um, he based it uh, on his own understanding of the Chinese I Ching with some tarot cards thrown in as well. Well, oh, actually, I, I did hear a radio interview a few years after that with Ralph Blum and uh, under some pressure he did admit that he'd made it all up. Well, I was so disappointed. But still, inspired to learn more about the real history of runes. So, um, okay, so that's when I went on and I did my degree in Old Germanic Languages. And part of this degree was runology. Now, uh, the first thing you learn when you take a degree is to question everything. Ralph Blum certainly helped me out with that one. Don't take anybody else's word for it, you know. You've got to study something and form your own opinions, or I should say, inform your own opinions. So these, these films are about the evidence that I unearthed when I was studying at university, and then more recently, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, I've been digesting this lot, and, um, uh, and I've put all this evidence together, and I would like to make these films and inform you about it. So personally speaking, when I'm trying to learn about the past, I want to know what is the evidence, you know, why do we believe something, what's the evidence for it? So to come clean about my own level of expertise, I'm not a runologist and I'm not an academic, um, although I have some academic background in the subject. I'm an informed amateur. I'm making these films for people who are new to the subject, or people who are confused by the amount of information that's out there, or, but especially I'm making these films for people who are interested in an in-depth look at the history of runes and runic magic. This is going to take quite a few films, but that's because I want to be thorough. So first of all, I'm going to go through the actual history of runes to give you a clear picture of that. 
And then I'll go on to look at the original magical or possibly magical inscriptions and practices. I'll also give you my own sources and recommended readings, so you don't have to take my word for it, you can check out and form your own opinion. Okay, so what is Germanic culture? Before I go any further, I think I should explain what I mean by the word Germanic. This is a huge language group. A whole group of modern languages are Germanic languages. Uh, this means they're related to one another. They have evolved from a common root back in the distant past. So examples of these languages are English, German, Dutch, Norwegian, Swedish, Danish, uh, Icelandic, Faroese, and then there are dialects like Flat German, Flat Frisian, I could go on. But um, all these languages share a common history. They have developed from a common ancestor language called Proto-Germanic, which is itself uh, an ancestor of an even older language group called Indo-European, which goes back to the Stone Age, but enough about that for now. Um, so these Germanic languages share a linguistic development through history, and they also share a culture. They share words, they share legends and stories and folk customs, ancient religious ideas and religious practices and uh, even art styles. So let me give you an example of this interconnected culture between the different languages. Take the names, take the names of the days of the week. All these Germanic languages have the same names for the days. So Sunday is named after the sun, Monday after the moon, Tuesday after the war god Tyr, Wednesday after the god of magic and knowledge, Woden, although some of the languages call that day midweek. And then we have Thursday uh, named after Thor, the thunder god, and Friday named after Frey or Frigg, a goddess of fertility and sexuality. And then Saturday is named after the Roman god Saturn, although some languages call that washing day. Um, but the very fact that these languages all share the same names for the gods and, and days of the week shows you how interconnected they are. Um, there are a lot of other examples of this shared Germanic culture, such as common heroic stories. You know, I've spent a lifetime exploring this. I think it's really fascinating. But to come back to the point of these films, I want to talk to you about a particular aspect of Germanic culture, runes and magical tradition. All right, this seems like a good point to end this first introductory film. I hope I've made it clear that I'm not putting myself forward as an expert. I'm more like a guide to the knowledge that is out there. And if you want to check out what I'm saying, then you should do so. I'll give you all my sources at the end of the last film, and then you can inform your own opinion and see what you think. So if uh, you're still interested, I shall see you in the next film.